Hi everybody, it's Lieutenant Brandon here with another DCSF-16 Viper video for you all. Um, today we'll be covering some of the basics that were asked around some of the sessions we've had in the past couple weeks, specifically on formations, tips, tricks, maybe you can see a little bit of my control inputs in the bottom left there. Um, uh, air to air refueling and um, some of the pattern work, forming and uh, shooting an ILS approach as well as um, doing the standard uh, break case one case one recovery which is the, the overhead break so I'll be kind of covering that doing a little demo by myself and then playing some of the clips that were recorded of um, with uh, some some people that were at those sessions this week so let's go ahead and uh, get started I'll meet you guys on the approach so we have what's called an approach plate um, on the caucus map we do not have any approach plates we just have case one kind of visual identifiers um, they are a little bit different but the important thing that we have here to point out to you all is um, the frequency for the ILS, uh, the final approach course heading, some relevant frequencies here if you're actually using it. So we, if I would get the ATIS, um, I'd be with approach, shooting the, shooting the approach with the, the approach, the Tracon controller there, talking to tower, um, and, and so on. Uh, the initial fix for the approach is KERS. So uh, we got the holding power in. So it's, we're going to approach from the north northeast over here. I kind of fly through this valley gives you kind of an idea of what we're going to are. Get through the valley, make an immediate 90 degree turn to get on the approach here. So, uh, going to kind of do like the swing thing at our own pace. And uh, it'll be zero 09, sorry, 209 on the heading um, as we intercept the localizer. Coming down to our flight instruments here, I'm on nav mode. What I'll go ahead and do is I'll hit that once, that again. So, I get my PLS, which is the ILS system. So, I get my needles. And my TACAN, uh, which is tuned into the TACAN for um, Nellis. The TACAN that we're using uh, that's plugged into this map is 12 X-ray for, uh, for Nellis there. So, oh, yeah, right there, channel 12, right there. You can see here on my TACAN, so you can go to this page right here. Um, by You're on your thing, you're going to hit TILS, and it'll bring up your, um, it'll bring up your, your page. You have your TACAN in the transmit receive mode to get the... Uh, distance information. You're going to have your TACAN channel 12 band x-ray. My ILS is on. Frequency is tuned to 10.10. And uh, down on my uh, HSI here, I've used this course knob to input my final approach course of 209er to help uh, stabilize my needles here. So I'm going to go ahead, maneuver around, and I'll let you know when I'm set up for the approach. So you have three places you can look. You can look at your HSI, so we are to the left of the course. We need to fly to the right to intercept it. So I'm going to go ahead and fly this heading. I'm going to get down to the, my, my altitude I'm supposed to be at. I'm supposed to be at 300 knots. So, oh, here, come, here comes the needle now. So what my goal is, I'm going to put my velocity vector on the needle. Normally what you do is you fly ILS approaches when you are um, when you are unable to see. So you're in IMC weather, so maybe you're in a cloud or anything, and you can't use visual points. Like, I have the airport out there, but I'm flying the approach for practice. So the needle's coming in. I'm going to you intercept your needle. You want to put your your best. You want to put your velocity vector here, right in the center. So once once the glide, so when, when it's when it's kind of dotted out by that, that means that we're too far away to intercept the glide slope, which means we can't get the glide slope. So once it comes in, I will want to make the uh, it'll make a plus, and I want to put my velocity vector right on the center of that plus. So let's go ahead and do our before landing checklist. So we're gonna go ahead and put our lights landing. Make sure we're in the right config. Everything stored. Master arm is safe. Um, Brief the approach, um, decision altitude looks like, so minimums are going to be 200 feet, so, well, since it's, well, that's our breakout altitude, so we obviously can see, so we're going to be not worried about that too much, so we'll go ahead and monitor that, oh, say, glide slope is in now, I did not see that, so we are, so we are way above glide slope, so we're going to go ahead and cut the power, add the brakes, and we're going to go ahead and descend down to catch that glide slope, and then when we, what we do to catch the glide slope is we're going to add power. And let's go ahead and get our gear down now and do our gear check on the three green before we go ahead and uh, continue that way. Here comes the glide slope. We're going to catch it with power. So I'm adding power to catch the glide slope, but I'm not adding too much where I'm going to fly away from it again. Coming through 1300 HGL now established on the approach. 
Now I'm just using con slight control inputs to keep myself centered. And I always want to be at or slightly above the glide slope. Get too low, you hit the ground. So now I'm at the glide slope. I'm going to add my power. And I'm going to put my velocity vector where I know it wants to go. My velocity vector wants to go... The glide slope is getting me to the end of the runway, the threshold. So my velocity vector should want to go to the threshold. And at this point, we would go ahead and get a clearance from tower. The Tracon controller would have passed us off by now, and I would have been talking to Nellis Tower. Nellis Tower, Viper Zero One, established the uh, ILS Two One left. And he would go clear for the ILS Two One left, and then he would say continue, and then I would say, and he would give me clearance to land at this point because I'm nice and close. He'd say Viper Zero One, Nellis Tower cleared to land. I'd say Viper Zero One cleared to land, runway Two One left. Go ahead and get our speed in check. We're a little bit heavy. So it's going to be a little bit faster than uh, normal. Now I'm broken through. 200 feet AGL is the minimum minimum approach altitude for this this approach. I'm through, so now I'm, all I'm doing it, all, I'm flying I'm flying by my, by my hands. So the speed brakes are coming out. I'm going to bump the power. And into the flare. And I'm pulling... Full, not full. I'm, I'm balancing the, the uh, F-16 up. Gonna try to keep it on the center line with some rudder input, and I'm basically holding my nose up so my my stick is all the way back um, to, to basically that was the aerodynamic braking effect right there. So basically just killed off a bunch of our airspeed. I still have my my speed brakes full out, and at this point now I'm established on the center line. I'm gonna continue down the runway unless told otherwise by tower. Um, looks like we got some uh, F-16 taxing our way at this point, so. I'll go ahead and use the brake here. Looks like I used the wrong runway today, but unfortunately runway 03 is a circling approach and not, uh, doesn't have its own, uh, doesn't have its own uh, uh, ILS frequency. So that's a, that's a shame. Oh, we're good. Whoa, that's a spawn. Would be would have been a shame to run into those guys. And yeah, that's kind of basically how to do it. Obviously, there is a more in-depth read on this approach plate, um, how you should read it and stuff like that. And there's different categories and stuff like that. It can be better explained if you watch if you watch any general aviation video about uh, general aviation video about these uh, these ILS uh, approach charts or what they're called. Um, it's it, it it'll go into great depths at, at what what numbers mean what, um, different things to be aware of, um, stuff like that. So with that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys a, a case one recovery. So I'm going to go ahead and plug off this ILS here. And to do that, you can keep the ILS frequency in. You come down to your ILS knob, you just turn it off. And the ILS is off. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll cut over to um, the case one recovery visual approach now and walk you through all that. So now for the uh, case one approach, I'm going to go ahead. Got some traffic in the pattern. Looks like he's lining up for the opposite runway, so I should be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and go zero three. Uh, sorry, two one left here again. Um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is now I'm the visual, so I'm gonna go ahead and descend down to fifteen hundred feet. So I'm gonna keep my descent coming down, um, and uh, I'm going to fly over this guy since I think he's established on final here. So I'm down fifteen hundred feet. I'm at fifteen hundred feet. I get my speed about. I want to be. I want to have my speed about between three hundred and three thirty, uh, in the Viper. And uh, at this point, I would call my tower and tell him that since I'm established on this approach, I got my speed and my altitude. That I'm at the initial and I'm ready to continue. It'll give me the continue and it'll give me the trap. Well, you'll see, it'll say left close traffic. Since there's two, since there's two airports, this will be the left close traffic around this way, and this is right. It'll be right close traffic that way. Oh, so speed's good. Altitude's fine. Within 100 feet's good. Um, and now at this point, we're just waiting for the threshold to come over, and then I'll go ahead and execute my power to idle. I'm gonna go power to idle. Um, until I'm gonna get about 275 knots, continue 275 around the corner until I get on the back azimuth, which is gonna be uh, 030 is the goal. All right, over the threshold now, powered idle, uh, and Viper 01 is in the break. My goal at this point is just to pull about 2 to 2.5 Gs and just drag my velocity vector at or just below the horizon. I don't want to sink too much, and I want to add that power back in um, in order to risk my airspeed if I need. The, the goal of the goal of the pole is to bleed off enough airspeed to get your gear in the safe position. So, my gear is in the safe position now. I'm gonna go ahead and try to hold about 240. I can bleed off a little bit more airspeed. Uh, rolling off, rolling out on the downward heading of 030. 
And we're going to go ahead and drop that gear down. Look, check, good, continue. I want to hold my altitude. Hold my altitude, sunk a little bit with the gear coming out. Alright, and at this point, I'm looking, waiting for my missile tip here, or my wing pylon, to go ahead and cross the threshold of that runway right there, and then I'll go ahead and make my base turn. Um, or even a little bit past if you want to give yourself a little bit more room. More room is never a bad thing. At this point, I'm going to go ahead, I'll be calling tower, as I turn left on my base here. Uh, Nellis Tower, Viper 01, base, gear, full stop. Viper 01, Nellis Tower, wind, 250 at 3, runway 21 left, clear to land. Viper 01, clear to land, 21 left. A little bit of a crosswind, a little bit of a crosswind uh, right to left here. I'll put a little bit of right aileron, aileron. Now I'm just using my, I'm rocking my throttle here, as you can see in the bottom left, just to keep the on this path. I don't want to flare too much. I want to go ahead and add a little bit of power at the end to go ahead and catch my descent. And good touchdown. I'm holding my nose up in order to get that arrow breaking effect. My brakes are all the way out at this point. Go ahead and get an F2 shot of this. Just balancing it there. Once the nose wants to come down, see I have, I have full aft deflection, but it doesn't want to come down. Um, just gonna go ahead and keep holding it, holding it, holding it. Speed brakes are fully deployed at this point, and now I'm gonna go ahead and start my controlled braking. Staying on the center line, and not trying to drift off too much. If you were doing this with uh, in a flight of four uh, or two, what I'll show you here in a second is the goal is to. You do want to keep it on the center line, but at some certain point you are you will shift to one side in order to make room for people behind you. So if one normally got to the left, two's got the right, three's got the left, four's got the right, uh, and so on. So you can efficiently stack airplanes and uh, make enough room so you can get off. And tower would go ahead and say Viper Zero One left at Alpha taxi to parking or over to ground because gra Nellis does have a ground controller. Viper Zero One off at Alpha over to ground one two one point eight and so on. So I hope that gives you a little glimpse into uh, kind of the landing procedure here, the two options you do have to you. Um, the weather might not always be nice to you, so it's good to practice the ILS, have a little bit of fun with it. Um, the goal of the ILS really, the, the military aircraft makes it easy for you, you just got to fly the needles um, and have a little bit of fun with it. So I uh, hope you guys did that, and uh, I'll go ahead and play some, we'll go ahead and continue with the formation, air to air refueling. We're going to go form up left side, so go ahead and shuffle echelon left when you're ready, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there, okay? Sounds good. I'll I'll ping the tanker. Mexico, one one in field. One two. Mexico one one. Proceed to pre-contact at twenty thousand at three five zero. Twenty thousand three five zero. Chicks in tow. Here we go. Go up a little bit here. All right. My. Port's open, receptacle's open, check. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get behind the boom and call him. Shift it, one shift and over. Here. So at this point, the goal for air to air refielding, once you are clear to go to contact, is as you can see up on the nose of the KC-135 right there, it's got a couple lights. On the left side, um, it shows you your position uh, up and down, and on the right side, it shows you position forward and aft. So it's really your job to maintain your left right. So basically, there's like that giant yellow stripe pin on the bottom. Um, if you just keep yourself aligned with that nice and center, you should be fine. And then looking at those lights, it tells you um, if you need to come, if you need to come forward or come back for the boom operator to plug you. 
Um, so as you can see right here, I nailed it right on. I'm right in the middle on both lights, um, but for some reason the boom wouldn't plug me here. It's just gonna take a little bit. It's just gonna take a second. The goal is to use minimal control inputs uh, and just keep yourself um, keep the tanker still in your 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 space. So if you keep the tanker still, it means you're flying and like matching all of its control inputs, and you're doing a good job. See now in real life, you'd be connected right there, but. <laughs> Yeah, I'm it's flying. Big. I'm flying the lights perfectly. Yeah. Are you getting Are you getting outside footage of this? Ooh, God, no. Okay. I guess I. I don't. Oh no, I don't have like recording stuff set up. I guess That's I can just do the video recording thing, but. Well, I went ahead and plugged, so. Two, one's off. All right, I'll call the tanker. Oh, that wake turbulence underneath. Yeah, the, the boom the boom is a technically is a wing. Those those things do generate lift, therefore they do have wick turbulence. Yes, sir. Ready, recontact. Good contact. Clear contact. Nice. He'll get there eventually. The, basically, when you're plugged, so when the when the when the um, the boom goes in the receptacle, it's called being plugged. Um, that's the hardest part. Um, and basically, then you're just basically attached to flying. So you just keep doing your same thing. Um, just stay locked in, focus on the lights. Um, as you can see, there's like a, a a red, a yellow, a green, and then a yellow and a red area. And that's for the boom operator to realize how much extra boom he's got. Um, so that if you're like kind of shifting around, like what he can do to help. So when you open up your receptacle, it'll have a blue light that says RDY for ready. Um, and then when you contact are plugged and the tanker is then transferring fuel to you, you have a positive fuel transfer um, when the green light comes up. And when you're all topped off, the bottom red light will come up. On. Yeah, you've been plugged. Yep. Oh, now it's unplugged. Yep. Oh, not anymore. All right. You want to go ahead and shift off over here? You got a lot. That was, that was a yeah, good plug. Yeah, sure. You were plugged in there for like a solid 30 seconds. Yeah, that's one of the best ones I've had in a while. Yeah, that, that looked really good. All right, go ahead. Uh, check that your AAR is revealed. Go ahead and ship Echelon right here. We'll go ahead and break off to the right. So he pulls in his boom, and it goes back up. Yep. Oh, I was close to full. I'll probably another, like, 10, 15 seconds. I would have had it. Damn it. <laughs> and there goes the boom. All right, two. Break away to the right. Clear break. Finally, to wrap up this video, we're gonna go ahead and talk about um, and demonstrate the key formations for formation flying, and then I'll kind of speak on some of the strategies that I use that were also mentioned in the tanker portion. Uh, so the standard formation uh, for two ship and four ship, um, or would be the echelon formation. So that's when you have um, all of the components on one side. So if one's leader, two's left, three's saddle left of two, and four is saddle left of three, um, and so on. So it looks like a nice diagonal line. The other one would be finger four. So pretty much the same thing, except you got two. Um, you got one airplane on the right and two on the left, or vice versa. So finger four to the right um, it would, would, would shift that, and you would have the other one on the left. But normally you would fly to the you would fly um, two ships in echelon left with one on the right, and that's finger four. The other formations are trail. This is a maneuvering formation. So if you're gonna make some high G turns and you're gonna be really banking more than 30 degrees. Uh, you're gonna it'll make it hard on your wingman to stay um, in formation with you um, doing all those maneuvers so you're gonna go ahead and send them trail um, so trail basically means they just drop back um, a couple hundred feet to uh, a good portion of a mile um, behind you um, and basically they just track you visually they got you okay I can see you but um, you're, you're not in danger of hitting one another and you're just kind of flying and doing your own thing then there's line of breast which is the tucked in version of combat spread it's a combat formation would be similar to line formation in military combat. It's basically directing all the firepower directly in front of you. And lastly, the two formations more or for um, show um, are is the wedge formation and the diamond formation. The diamond is just the wedge formation with uh, a slot pilot. The goal for fl the goal when flying formation uh, control input wise is to make small minor corrections. And if you are um, a flight lead to not oscillate too much to make it easier on your wingman. Um, and if you're a wingman, to rock your throttle and uh, really be super gentle through the, the, the control stick, whether it be a side stick or a center column stick, 
um, when uh, inputting in inputting flight control inputs because even the slightest uh, deflection in the aileron and just especially with the wake turbulence that you might if you slide too far in behind um, the guy you're trying to form up off of uh, you'll run into a situation where um, you can go south very quick and uh, for safety purposes it's good to maintain um, uh, a good a good amount of spacing between you and the airplane depends on the training or combat situation and what you're trying to achieve there are different um, spacing rules and what's called a bubble um, a training bubble um, that um, you will use if you're less experienced but if you are more experienced and you are comfortable then you can get nice and close um, like two is here and uh, just really focus on in formation flying is a lot of focus what well, you should be you should be heads out of the cockpit um, if you're flying formation, you shouldn't be worried about your airspeed at all. Your airspeed is a direct result of your throttle um, and stick inputs. And so basically if you're matching uh, leads, throttle, and stick inputs uh, to a, a high degree, then you'll have the same airspeed and altitude. Oh man, this is pretty. Indeed it is. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or um, want some practice, go ahead and attend the Husky Flying Club sessions. I will be in attendance most most sessions. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the Discord in the Sim Talk. Um, and if you have any ideas or need any other videos explaining certain things or want some walkthroughs, go ahead and uh, let me know. And I'm happy to help out. Thanks for uh, watching this one and uh, have a great rest of your day. Hey, what's up, Scott? What's up? Hey, what's up, Jared? I'll tighten nice. it up. I'll tighten it up here, and we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and just basically shift and a little bit forward. Ah, uh, this looks beautiful. Holy echelon, right? So go ahead and call line up rest Scott, and I'll go ahead. And sh I'll go. We'll go three and two, and we'll shift. Go. Uh, so what's the call? For you that? go. Just... You go. Pup flight line up rest. Pup flight line up rest. Three. Oh, it looks hot. Heard the... <laughs> All right, watch this.